All right, enough of you guys have asked about this 3D printer in the last video for me to make another one about it. Now, this isn't really a review channel. I will kind of be reviewing this, but uh, being Physics Anonymous, we're also going to pull it apart and make it better. All right, just in case you don't have a clue how these 3D printers work, I'm going to go over the basics. It's actually pretty simple. This is your UV curable bath. So this resin is designed to cure at a specific wavelength of light, in this case 405 nanometers or somewhere in the UV range. And under here, you've got an LCD screen. Uh, it's a pretty high resolution screen. And under here, instead of the regular white backlight that you'd get on a regular screen, they replace that with a high powered LED that projects UV light at 405 nanometers. And let me go over a few of the flaws of this machine. So kind of the first problem with this printer, it's not a big deal, is it uses a USB stick. This is one I bought on Amazon. It does come with one that's a little junky and is full of Chinese software I don't really trust. Uh, but nothing wrong with the USB port itself, but the software you use to slice it is, well, mediocre at best. The next problem is the resin. This is what comes with it. It's about 500 milliliters, and to be honest, it just doesn't last very long for the price. Uh, they were charging almost $60 for this at one point. I think it's come down a little bit, but this is the Anycubic branded stuff. I actually just discovered this one a few days ago. This is made by Nova 3D. Uh, this is a one liter bottle and it cost about $80. Uh, so it's a little bit cheaper than the Anycubic stuff. But I found it actually cures maybe even a little bit faster. But yeah, 80 bucks is still pretty steep. In fact, if you compare it to an FDM printer, a roll of filament might cost you 25 bucks these days and will last four or five times longer than this bottle will. Overall, this printer is actually built pretty well. A lot of uh, nice machined aluminum pieces. But one of the places they really cheaped out on is this linear rail system. It's just an extruded piece of aluminum with some ground rod. And they've got some bearings in there to, to uh, get your linear motion. I've really never liked this sort of system. Uh, you don't get much rigidity out of it to start with, and it tends to loosen up over time. You can see this has got a fair bit of movement up and down and left and right. So let me show you what I have to fix that, and we're going to pull this apart and figure out how we're going to make it work. So I'm sure most of you guys are familiar with these, uh, pretty standard set of linear rails. I got the pair on Amazon for, I don't know, 40 bucks. I'll link in the description. Well, I mostly wanted to get it apart so I had access to this rail because I think this is where we're going to mount the linear rails. I'm going to use as much of this as possible. So here's the control board, kind of interesting. Uh, they're using an ARM processor of some kind. I'm sure somebody will look that up for me. Uh, USB port to plug in your storage. Uh, it's actually got an ethernet port here, which is interesting because uh, there's no ethernet port on the outside of the housing for this to go to. They clearly laser etched all the markings off of here. That's probably your FPGA for the, uh, the display. Back here you have its homing switch. Nice part about the design is it only has kind of one moving part. I only need one homing switch. Well, as long as I have this apart, it's a good opportunity to show you how these bearing systems work. They're real simple. You just have two bearings in a line here, one offset here. Uh, these two ride along uh, one of these rails, and this one rides along one of these other rails. And they're adjustable. You can move this up or down to give it more pressure. They work okay. I'm just not a big fan in the long run. They don't have that much precision, and they tend to go out of adjustment by themselves. All right, now to the business end of this guy. Let's see how we can upgrade this. All right, here's what I've come up with. Pretty simple design. I did decide to mount the rails on the side here, and this is the part we're going to be machining. Now, I did decide to do this in one single piece just for ease of machining, but it does pose a little bit of an issue because these rails really have to have tight tolerances. If this surface and this surface aren't in the exact right position, uh, this whole thing's going to bind up. So to account for that, I've actually given it a little bit of clearance, which I intend to fill with a shim between the rail and the pillar. So I've calculated about a thousandths on each side. Uh, of course, not knowing exactly what the machine is going to cut. Might be a little less, might be a little bit more, but I think it'll work out fine. All right, let's machine it. Now we could just run over to the mill. This would be a, a perfect opportunity to use our mini mill, but I have something else in mind.
So was all that worth it? Short answer, absolutely. Uh, the prints that this is capable of now are kind of insane. I had Ryan take a few high resolution pictures of this guy just to show you. I mean, you can literally be holding this in your hand, looking close up, and you can't tell it's 3D printed. You can't. Uh, you have to almost pull out a microscope to tell that this thing was 3D printed. Absolutely nuts. I'll try and show you a few of the before and after. I mean, this printer was pretty capable of doing some, some decent stuff before we made the modification. Uh, but I think this is going to really improve the print quality as well as the reliability of it. So really happy with this. Now, the, the longer answer is a little more complicated. You might notice that this thing is back in pieces. And actually, it had nothing to do with the modifications I made, <laughs> if you can believe it or not. The short story is I managed to puncture a hole in that clear FEP layer at the bottom of the resin tank and resin leaked all inside the printer, which is, is my fault 100%, but it also kind of points out a flaw in this machine is that uh, it's really not designed to have that sort of error and it's an easy thing to do. That plastic layer is, is remarkably thin and fragile and when it breaks, it literally leaks into the machine and in my case, completely destroyed the LCD screen. So I've had to order a new one. Uh, luckily, that is one of the replacement parts you can find for these machines. Uh, they, they cost you, if you're willing to wait months and months, uh, about $35 on Ali. I found a supplier on Amazon Prime for 80 bucks. So I'll link that in the description just in case that's happened to you. Again, my fault but that's the way it goes. So uh, when those replacement parts come in, I'll go ahead and do another video on this if you guys want, uh, show you how to replace that LCD screen. But in the meantime, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. So one more thing. Uh, you know, we talked about making parts and not just pretty things. So this is a 0 0.75 by 52 millimeter standard camera thread. Uh, we've definitely never been able to 3D print one of these before and I have my doubts, but... Let's see your FDM printer do that.